Let's try and make a smile. All right, folks, we're back. I'm your host, BKP, and it is time for Ask the Doc with Dr. William Whaley and Dr. Raymond Timnan. We want to thank Georgia Cancer Specialists affiliated with Northside Hospital Cancer Center for our questions today. Um, I nice, got the ball. Nice sweater, nice sweater. I nice got the tie. ball. What do you mean you got the ball? I got the ball. He started out this morning talking about the weather. Okay. All right. And and I and he said we've had two or three snowstorms in the last 20 years. We have a little bit of snow four or five times a year. But you'll remember that when we had that huge snowstorm, what is it, 90, whatever it is, and the snow was 20-something inches, I can walk from my house on the lake to my office. I did. Right. All the schools were closed. Right. And there are two, two cars parked at my office that have come from Dalton, Georgia, across the mountain for chemotherapy. And my nurse and my main assistant are there. These are country people. And my office is open at 8.30 in the morning when everything north of Atlanta had been closed down for a week. So we, this isn't going to bother us any. Now, the second thing is you were talking about that stuff. This COVID epidemic, it gets to be serious as a train wreck, and I'm getting ready to tell you why in just a minute. For example, the the um, child care in our buildings closed down for yesterday and today because they can't get by and come to work. Problems. Yep, you go to the tech, um, go, to, uh, go out to eat, and they tell you you're going to be a long wait because they got anybody to wash dishes. And it, but the serious thing is that Dr. Tidman and my my barber is out of work now, can't work now. When I can't get my hair cut, Ray can't get his hair cut. That's an emergency. problems. I, I'm sorry if I didn't recognize. Is that I yeah, didn't, that's a problem. I didn't but know. Listen, all you have to do is look at me to see what the weather is today. So. Right. He's got a Swiss got a got Swiss shirt five on. Layers of pants on. Three layers of sweater. You know. Oh, wait a minute. Let's slow down. You have that in case I have to walk. Yeah, in case my car You don't goes live over. where you have no. to walk. Well, ice. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Let me explain Where to I come from, we used to dress with the in case I have to get out and walk. We would go out in the truck in the morning and put extra stuff and have our stuff ready in case we hit a snow drift have you or been something. In my truck? We have to walk. <laughs> All right, now let me explain to you. All right, All right, right. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All, All due respect to Pennsylvania, people from right. Minnesota. <laughs> Know what cold is. Okay. Oh, okay. So wow. This is cold. This Easy. Is cold. Easy. Back down. Yeah, all right. So, now, are you ready in case you have to I'm walk? I'm ready. Okay. Ready. Now, then we got a bunch of piece. <laughs> uh, both of our questions today. Oh, we got questions? PCP stuff to them. But you always ask me what I want you, to, what people to do at the end of the at the end of the program. And so, go back about two years ago. Wait, two years ago, we started talking about this. Four years ago, I said, please go donate blood. Remember? Please go donate blood. I sent Ray, I thank you, four different emails yesterday from hospital systems who have had to close down yes. all surgery, mm -hmm. not because of COVID, but because of no blood. blood. Absolutely. They'll make it easy for them. Where can they donate blood right now, today? To tell you the truth, up here they have to go. Where do they have to go, Ray? Well, I, I guess they have to call the hospital who, who runs the mobile blood units but and see not, where they're parked. I don't think right there's now. one up here today. So yeah. you have to, we'll have to probably go to, to uh, Blood Assurance, yeah. and I think yeah. that's over in Murphy or somewhere. Yeah. But anyway, donate blood. All right. We, you want to ask a couple questions? These are both PCP-type questions, and, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying them both. You ready? Ready. My brother is in excellent health. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. He is 46 years old. He had his second malignant melanoma removed about six months ago, and he was found to have positive lymph nodes and spots on his liver. So here's a 46-year-old guy who has stage 4 melanoma. Right. I'm actually going to be doing a, uh, an hour-long conference with the uh, Southern District of New York uh, federal judge and criminal prosecutor <laughs> didn't talk about this thing for reasons are important on Tuesday morning. He has been in a clinical trial with a drug called Opdivo. Remember now, we've had lots of Opdivo. That's been around a long time. That was the first immunotherapy. And a new one called immune checkpoint inhibitor. It doesn't make a difference. Whatever that is. His tumors are all getting smaller. 
He's been started on thyroid medicine because of a blood test, but feels great and has no side effects. The trial is going to end, but they say he can stay on both these drugs, and one is in the market and one is an experimental. What is your advice? Well, what's the advice? When something works, yeah. continue it, right? right. There's not, any, there's not any, any secret about that. But what I thought was interesting about this is that we haven't talked about melanoma. I've seen two melanoma patients this week, both of whom had gone to see their PCP for something else. You saw the thing last week about the girl who is, had gone to a hockey game. Did you read that? When the visiting team, visiting team, she's sitting behind the visiting team's bench, you know, she sees a mole on the back of the neck of the assistant stick boy, not a big shot, and wrote a, a text in top, tall print on her cell phone and put it up against the thing and had to beat on the glass to get him to read it. And it says, you got a spot on your neck, it may be cancer, go see your doctor. And he had a level, uh, Clark's level four melanoma on the back of his cool neck. Cool story. Great story. So anyway, put that first one up there. This 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 uh, combination drug that this person took on clinical trial has just been uh, approved in other countries. It's going to be approved here. It's actually two drugs. The Nevo, you always remember we were talking about Nevo and Ipi for Ipi for melanoma. Talked about it before, but side effects were high. So this drug right here has. Equal effect or better, but less side effects. So here, raise and research, right? You pull that down. Mm -hmm. When you are doing a research project, what have I already always said? You never can get that through a clinical trials committee unless the experimental arm is thought to be better than what you have as standard therapy or less toxic. So why do you want to study Wrigley's versus uh, two, two different types of, of chewing gum. You've got to study something that's better, theoretically better, or and theoretically or less toxic or safer. So that's what uh, this was studied for two reasons. One, toxicity, and second, for effectiveness. All right, take that one now. Just, uh, just throwing in a comment there. It's nice that, he, that there's an ongoing arm that he can stay into because a lot of times you get, you get out of the study and you, you have to sit for a year or two. Well, if, you, if, it's, if it's an oncology study and it well, made you better, they do let you get the drug on okay. compassionate release while they're going through this. With the rest of the trial. Uh, they, yeah. they, they, this, what do you call it? Three-letter alphabet agency yeah, yeah. to get the it approved? Agencies. Okay, yeah. so here's Ray Tidman's slide here. Yeah. This is the standard therapy. Standard, you look at it your own skin. You've seen mm. this a million mm. times. Asymmetries, funny-looking borders, changing color. Um, Anyway, so you, you've seen this. A yeah, million, forget the A, B, C, D, E part. So yeah, does, th yeah. but that is we, we do this a lot. That's yeah. the family. That's the family doc's job. But patients, families should know that. So let, can, let me interject there because yeah, that's right. an important part to nuance. Um, lesions that are changing, get them looked at. Okay, but, but but we don't see the rest of our body. But we're always but our family somehow does. are naked. Yeah. Or we're in front of a barber, or we're, we're, you're on a masseuse table. You're somewhere where somebody's looking at some part of your body, and if they see something, I ask say my something. folks who are, you know, you know, to to say to the patient, you get this checked. Yeah. It may be nothing, but you know there are parts, you know, they're between the webs of your toes. They're you know, obscure places on your back where you can have one of these lesions, which are now very treatable. Yeah, the last uh, the, I saw one this uh, two weeks ago was on mm -hmm. the sole of the foot. Yeah. I've seen them underneath a fingernail. I, I had a patient. It was it was between two toes. Yeah. So anyway, point is, your, your family. Look at look, look at your children. Look at your look at your wife. All right. This is sort of a. It's not a survival curve. It's, I'm looking. Now. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming next. All right. All right. It's it's come it's coming next. But here here is the here's the story. This combination more than doubles more than doubles the disease-free survival, the survival rate, the recurrence rate if used adjunctively, and anything that's twice as, twice as effective and less toxic definitely should get, 
yeah. should get through the FDA. You can pull yeah. that down. When it gets through the FDA, what's, how's it going to get through the FDA? It's going to get through with a emergency use authorization yeah. because these studies only have a few hundred people in them. Yeah. And until you've got a couple thousand people in them, you know, it may make your toes turn green or something, but you just don't know that at that point in time. All right? You got it? What's that? Survival curve. Ah, throw the survival curve up just long enough to pay homage to our boss. And that is that the survival curve, if you, if you look at it, you still got a huge number of these patients that are going to not survive. You can pull that down. So the drugs work well for this patient. Now, the second part of that was they started him on thyroid. And I wanted to go into that a little bit because we've gone through these immune suppressive drugs before. And the most common side effect is it lowers your thyroid. Second is it lowers your cortisol level. Third is it then begins you can have pneumonia and things such as that sort. So but getting somebody on thyroid, it's going to be, we're going into that in the next question, by the way. But getting somebody on thyroid is a harmless, easily thing done. Thyroid is easily, easily uh, Managed. Uh, managed, and if your cortisone's low, you give treatment-related Addison's disease, and you have to put them on some sort of cortisone-like drug, you have to be a little more careful of them, because if they get an infection or something, you have to be able to, to, to monitor that. But still, the side effects of these drugs, the hazard-benefit ratio is way, way on the benefit side, not the hazard. So my, 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 my thing is, take the thyroid, stay on the treatment, stay in that care. I don't know exactly where they would be getting this treatment. I think that tri that clinical trial may have been at, at Emory. I don't I don't know if uh, Dr. Bordoni is doing that in Northside or not, but that clinical trial was big. So but that's Bill, over your lifetime <clears throat> that well, that's a long time. Over the last 20 years the care of melanoma has changed. Oh god. How? Well, let, let me go back. I, I I'm going to be testifying to this on Tuesday. Immediately after World War II, in Japan, when MacArthur was the governor, Japanese that had tuberculosis were placed in, we, here we had sanitariums like we had Rome and so forth. They were placed in groups, of, uh, groups they were, and MacArthur did a great job of building a country over there. And they made the observation that people who had metastatic kidney cancer or melanoma, when they caught tuberculosis, frequently their tumors would shrink. Now that was the first indication of observation that some sort of immune stimulation would make the tumor shrink. All right, that tuberculosis, BCG is a tuberculosis, uh, modified tuberculosis used to immunize people in Europe. Let's flip over now to about 1968-70 a, the research group, the Southeastern Cancer Study Group, Southwest Cancer Study Group, took melanoma advanced like this, that's before we had anything else, in an effort to prevent recurrence, we did a study with BCG, where they would take the patient, you'd take a needle and you would make a tic-tac-toe board the size of a postage stamp around the operative site, rub BCG in it, get a local skin reaction, and the recurrence rate was smaller. We didn't have any other good immunotherapy until Opdivo came out and Dr. and what we call it, the Jimmy Carter drug came out. But chemotherapy has never done squat for melanoma. So melanoma treatment has been surgically remove it, get the lymph nodes out, and if it's going to recur, you're going to die until this last wave of new immunotherapies has come up. First one was Opdivo, second was Katrita, third was the Ipi, and this combination here still has the Opdivo, which was the original drug, plus the new one, and immunotherapy is the therapy that diminishes recurrences and treats metastasis. And that's all within the last 10 years that these major advances. It, they, they, yeah, that's all within the last 10 years, yeah. but, that, but the thought goes way back to World War II. God, that tuberculosis did something about stimulating the immunity, so they've been grinding away at this forever. Let's go to um, these uh, uh, what, what uh, anti-worm drugs for animals mm -hmm. that have been used over the years to stimulate immunity in colorectal cancer in the 70s. 
Um, and now there's still studies going on of using anti-parasitic anti drugs to stimulate immunity. So that basically melanoma treatment is an immune, after the surgical treatment and getting them free of disease, it's an immune therapy. We're not supposed to talk about the, those anti horse warming medicines. That'll get you thrown that, off the internet. Not only will it get you thrown off the internet, uh, some guy... Uh, hey, you can lose your license. Well, that, yeah. didn't they try to take some kid, uh, guy's kids away from well, they him? they did. They did in New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. well, anyway, that's, anyway, that's, we, that's politics. We, can have, we, we are prohibited from talking about politics. I was letting it go. I was, I was, I was I I letting go where it was. I think it's go. madness. But, huh? but it, it's, it's madness. madness. It's madness. But anyway, so, anyway, those anti... Those anti uh, Worming drugs have immune stimulatory effects that we are talking about in malignancy here today, Ray. Malignancy. All right. Okay. Now you got that one down, Pat. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Georgia Cancer Specialist, affiliated with Northside Hospital Cancer Institute. We appreciate it very much. We have. I have a quick question. Yeah. What was the PCP lesson there he gave you, which you didn't pay attention to? One of them is when you got your clothes off somebody is looking at the rest of I you. I was checking. I was and the checking second me. thing is that when you're treating a family, you got a husband and a wife and they've got children, and you're doing a skin inspection on the husband or the wife, and you give them, and a lot of these have this little thing they yeah, gave them with card. the ABCD, little, little yeah. cards, you know. You encourage them to look at their children and to look at their spouse. Yeah. That is a responsibility of a primary care doc. It could be a GYN for a female, but it's yeah. a responsibility of a primary care doc, not a dermatologist. Well, yeah, that, I really want to strike home on that. And we get into these mnemonics of how to remember this and that. Look, well, I don't need my patients to diagnose. I need them to know what to pay attention to. Is the lesion changing contour, size, shape, color? And if it is, if go it is, see go somebody. Checked. Basically. All right. Anyway, that's quick. Is it yes or no? Did you watch the game Monday night? Yeah, you mean the hockey game? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I stayed that's, up. That's heresy. That's I stayed heresy. up and watched them do the snow angels on the ground and the confetti and everything. Yeah. And I was late to work the next morning. No, I wasn't late. I that's what I wanted to make sure of. I wanted to make sure you were late to work. I wasn't late night. to work. I just went in a little sleepy. Well, I did too. Okay, our second question. All right, now this, this, this is a great question. It begins by saying, my husband is an ex-NFL lineman. Okay, now you saw that game. How much did number ninety-nine on the Georgia defense weigh? Oh, I don't know. That's a we call it a big old boy. We're well, well yes, big old boy. But, a big old boy. But every week they say somewhere between three forty and three sixty. He's putting up. He's putting up three three five. Well, over the, the scale ends at three fifty. Huh? So you're guessing after that. Yeah, Most but he scales. weighs between three forty and three sixty, which is three fifty. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I've got a lot of professional athletes in my practice, right? Because I've been yes. treating them since you've, 1972. Been, yes, I mean, I've got hundreds of them. So he's an ex NFL lineman and an African American. Okay. He has stage four prostate cancer. The African American, much bigger risk of prostate cancer, right? And that is in complete remission on hormone shots and pills. Now, this is the PCP part. Mm -hmm. His oncologist has noted a goiter mass in his neck and upper chest that we thought was big muscles from working out. I'm going to show a picture here in a minute. He this said, some "Weird looking muscles, but go ahead." Yeah. Well, no, not a few, not a few, 340 <laughs> Well, that's pounds. true. He's got a lot of real estate. That's yeah, true. and you got you got a big neck to start yeah. with, and it's this is, bilateral. This is a big. This is a big guy. Just say, you know, you're not talking about an NFL lineman if you're not talking about. Yeah, a big and guy. and it's bilateral because right. I'm going to show a unilateral neck. But if it was bilateral and you were a big guy, that's you true. would never notice it. So some his PCP felt his neck mm -hmm. and found this thing to be up there. All right that we thought were big muscles from working out. He says it's not cancer, but is an autoimmune goiter. And we're going to come into that in a minute. And he's putting him on thyroid pills. That's the oncologist did that, that felt the neck. Now, the PCP thought we should get a second opinion and perhaps remove it. What do you think? Now, I don't know who that PCP is, but he doesn't know much about substernal goiters. All right, pull that first one up there. So we're going to talk about substernal thyroid goiters. Where, what's the sternum? Yeah. Right, okay, right. so these things occur in the neck and underneath the chest. All right, okay. so that's the first. Put that next up there. Just that, that's this picture of the thyroid. 
Now, just to refresh your memory, the thyroid is a little, little uh, bilobe strict thing, yeah. sits right here. But in some people, anatomically, it is not in the neck so much, but right underneath the collarbone. Right. All right, pull that down. And the thing generally is a little difficult to feel, but PCP feels it every time he does a physical to see if there's knots in it or if it's generally enlarged. Now, if you look at this guy's neck, put the next mm -hmm. one up. I've seen, I've seen that. You have. Mm -hmm. Now, but if you were a lineman, now this is a skinny guy. This got a huge, you know, 20-inch neck and weighs 350 no neck. pounds. Yeah, no yeah. Neck. and neck sits on his chin, you know. <laughs> then that would easily be thought to be muscular. Take that down. Now, this is another thing that, that we see this all the time. Guys in the PCP's office, now this time of year particularly, he's got a cough. He says, I'm going to send you over to the hospital for chest x-ray. Make sure you don't have viral pneumonia or the COVID or something. And they take the x-ray. And you know your right side is supposed to look, got the x-ray up there, the right side is supposed to look like the left side. That that big old bump right there, you have seen a bump that looks like that when we've had Hodgkin's disease, lung cancer, and everything else. But when that bump right there is associated with a lump in the neck, probably is not malignant. Pull that down now. So, now you've got this big old fat neck. What you got here, BKP? Uh, algorithm. Algorithm. Not well, algorithm. Sure. Algorithm. Algorithm. I, right. I think I heard that. I, I think, I, I, think I, <laughs> I, I heard something different. Uh, my producer was saying something in my ear. What was <laughs> yeah. that? All right. <laughs> so anyway, at the end of the day. From the studio? <laughs> at the end of the day, when you've got this big old thing up here and you've got antibodies to the thyroid, What's that say? Can you, read it? you don't have to read Chinese. Hashimoto. Hashimoto. Okay, put the next one up there. I just love it. We're going to talk about... I little... say that when I'm lifting heavy things. Hashimoto. Hashimoto. All right, so we're going to put that up there. Hash... <laughs> you got Hashimoto up there? All right, pull that down. Stop. <laughs> put the next one up. Who's that? There uh, he is. There he is. Hashimoto. Hey, man, what's he look just like? A, just a guess. Yeah, he's a Japanese from a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. I love it when the disease has got a man's name. Cushing's yeah. disease and all that, birth child's node and all that. Put the next one up there. Hashimoto's is a really common disease. Low very, very thyroid common. Low thyroid has its peak incidence in the second, third, and fourth decade of life in females greater than males and frequently is an autoimmune process where they make an antibody kind of like you would have arthritis or something against the thyroid and then the function of the thyroid begins to go down and the thyroid gland generally gets bigger and gets bumpy and diffusely enlarged so this did, is did they give you the numbers on that I'm, I'm guessing my practice four to one female to man yeah I think it's about no I, I didn't pull that out here but anyway if you could pull that down, I gave you a story once once before, and I'll tell it again. Beginning in Sept beginning on September first, nineteen thirty nine, there was a disruption in the uh, world. What was it? Nazis invaded Poland. All right, so Sorry, I'm, I'm listening because you. You take things with dates, and I don't know if there's a med something medically no, no. happened at that time. No, no, no. And September. you switch it over to Nazis invading Poland. So okay, you gotta, well, the Nazis. You know, it's not like I don't know, but I don't know where you're okay, going. Okay, the Nazis. The Nazis <laughs> invaded Poland, and about eight right. weeks later, they've driven the Brit. They've driven uh, the British okay. down to Dunkirk, and they've ruined the second. They ruined Europe. And B they, BKP. This is he's got the back off the watch now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> and so they have. <laughs> that's a good one, right? So there are international raise a raise a member of the of several international societies that now can meet virtually but in those days they had to go different places in the world so the world endocrinology group did not have a meeting from 1939 until 1948 after the war was over and there was some rebuilding so in 1948, the world endocrinologist coming from beat up Western Europe came to New York City and the president was the chairman of the Department of Endocrinology at Columbia University. 
they go in to see the guy see, to, to, for, this, for this welcome dinner, and his wife comes in, like a cretin, total cretin, big, thun, big tongue, bent over, gained hundreds of pounds, and they inquire of him, when did your wife get her thyroid disease? And he did not recognize in his own wife that she was a walking textbook that looked like this picture right here. And the reason for that is this occurs so slowly that from day to day you can't see the change. And the only way you would see the change would be if you hadn't seen them in four, five, or six years and knew that this was a classic picture of hypothyroidism and not just gluttony. That is, that's, that's, so that's, that's a great, impressive. That's yeah. an impressive story. Okay, so here's what you get. You get all, you get, you, you get, you know, that's low thyroid. You, you put, pull that next one down. We're not going to, we're not going to use it. So, how so do you, I want you to know, Brian, when you call me a Cretan, I really take offense to that. He does. I do. That's what, that's. When I call you a Cretan? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, Cretanism. <laughs> write that down. Cretanism, though, is that in children. Oh, it's in children. They're born but, with it. And they're they're born with it. it. All yeah. right. So, it's easy to treat. Put it up there. There you go. What's that? It's your thyroid. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a generic bottle of levothyroxine. You want to talk about something that's cheap. Now, that's cheap. So here's, you can pull that down now. The, quite, the thing is, many people don't know exactly how you go about determining. And this is my medical student. Listen to this. Because here's the analogy I use for patients. I want you to imagine that your furnace is worn out that the thermostat is set at 70 degrees and theoretically you should be able to walk over to the thermostat with an electric meter and measure the current going to the basement. That current is thyroid stimulating hormone called TSH. That's a good analogy. You have now built a fire in the fireplace and insulated the house and the temperature in the house is 71 degrees. In theory, you go over to the thermostat, no current going to the basement, meaning TSH has to be suppressed. Now, here's the secret that most people don't get. In engineering, it's called a negative feedback, feedback loop. Feedback loop, yeah. Okay, now here's the story. Let's talk about marijuana. When you smoke pot, there are 308 psychoactive chemicals in marijuana. You only measure one THC. The thyroid makes about seven active thyroids, T3, T4, T7, bunches of, you only measure T4. That drug is T4. So when you give thyroxine to a patient and you have effectively given them enough thyroxine, the T4 level is going to be higher than the upper limit of normal or at the upper limit of normal because you don't have those other active T3s, T7, and T8s in that package. And the TSH level, which you always look at and want it to be normal, is going to be below the lower limit of normal because you've got to shut down that furnace, right? Now, once you did that to this guy right here, this thing in his neck and his chest is going to shrivel up like nothing. So you do not need to remove it. So uh, let me emphasize the f negative feedback loop because patients, they get confused because the, the nurse will call back and say, well, your TSH is low, your thyroid is fine. And well, I thought you told me my, my TSH is low. So they're like, am I getting enough or not? What's a negative feedback loop? So when that TSH is low, it is your brain saying, the pituitary in your brain saying to the thyroid gland, I got enough here. Don't worry about it. I got enough here. Don't worry. You're fine. Okay. So it's turning off that signal, but like Bill says, sit down to the furnace. So a TSH that is uh, normal or subnormal is where you want the patient to be. And you don't want to be so low that they're getting palpitations and they're right. You got you like got to watch it, but uh, so. you got a clinic. You yeah. know what's important there? You got to see the patient. Yeah. You can't see the patient on a, be a television, and count their pulse, have them hang out their hands and see if they're tremoring. Watch their eyes. You got to have that patient in your office. You got to yeah exactly. Now, exactly. Bill, don't tell the CDC that they want us to do everything on television. Now. You can't do it. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and you're. You're not I'm not pushing your buttons. You're not I'm pushing your buttons. You're a cretin. <laughs> I think he is pushing his buttons. <laughs> he bothers me when I call him that, but, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did I? No, 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 you're at? doing fine. What, oh. what, what, what do you want to know now? Nothing. 
I don't want to know nothing. You have given <laughs> me scared. a whole. You You're gave scared. me a whole lot here. I mean, I'm on overload now. Please, no more. <laughs> All right, now we already went through the map. Yeah, I see. Okay, the map. and 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 the thing. So, so the medical news today. I want to say the very first one of important medical news today is they're shutting down hospitals, not because of COVID but because of a lack of enough blood to perform surgery. So if you get the opportunity to donate blood. We opened up with that. That's very important. Oh, you know, we, we enjoy the segment, and, and, and we get along and have a little fun. But at the same time, when, when we get into something that just really needs to be stressed, the seriousness is, is Dr. Whaley's correct. There's surgeries uh, we've talked about from day one concerning of follow-up with treatment, testing, other medical things that we have put on the back burner, lack of a better way to put it, we need to give blood. We need to give blood. We do not need to have any surgeries or procedures that are not being done because right. of the lack of blood. That's right. All right, now, next thing. Right, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, yeah. Before we get off thyroid here, I have to, oh. you know, we have we have a guest in the green room, and he's a fantastic student, medical student from the great University of Mercer, one of the okay. fine uh, medical schools in the state of Georgia. Yeah. And I have to tell them medical jokes all the time. So when I was a student, I had a... When you're a student, you have everything. You, you think you've, you've got every disease you study, you think you've got it. So I had a right. housemate who was constantly complaining about being cold. We were arguing about turn the heat up, turn the heat down, you know. Because you're, stu you're poor, and you can't run that heater all the time. Anyway, he was constantly complaining about being cold. And he finally said, no, I'm anemic. And then he got into learning about thalassemia. And he said, well, I'm thalassemic. And I said, his name is also Ray. I said, Ray, you're not anemic, and you're not thalassemic. You're just a cretin. <laughs> low thyroid. Was he? No. Oh, okay. He was just a hypo. Just another way of insulting. But what he man. didn't know, going another direction, what he didn't know is he was talking to somebody from Minnesota when he said yeah, it's yeah, cold, right? right? Yeah, yeah. No. And I you're prepared. I'm, I'm prepared. Prepared. I'm like, the, the, the other thing about Minnesota. Okay. Oh my. Minnesota gosh. versus Georgia. Okay. In Georgia, when it snows a little bit, everybody stays off the roads. Okay. And when it's icy, they're like, "Oh, let's go ice skating." In Minnesota. You're on the roads all the time when snowing. When you right. see ice out there, nobody goes out on the ice. Nothing drives in the ice. Exactly. Okay. Don't they go got, on the ice. They, they, they got too much experience. Yeah, they they're know experienced what they're doing. with ice. All right. I, <clears throat> I sent this to you yesterday because I wanted you to read this, this article right here. What's that say? Quebec plans to fine unvaccinated adults. Yes, I read that. Article. Okay, that. But but yes. if you go all the way through there, That's the fine, fine in Quebec was going to be a hundred Canadian, which is about seventy bucks U.S. <laughs> what was the fine in those European countries? Three thousand six hundred euros. They're going to bankrupt you. Three thousand six hundred euros is about uh, forty one hundred. Four thousand no. Four thousand six hundred bucks. You know the exchange rate, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, I keep it, keep pull it, it back up in the morning. Keep it in the back of your so head. Bill, that's not coercion. Okay. That's not coercion. They're not holding you down and sticking a needle in you. They're just No. Fine. Whoa, whoa, I'm trying to get you. I'm trying okay. to get to a place. All right. Now, if you're a heavy smoker or you ride your motorcycle without your helmet on, the insurance company will charge you a premium based on your smoking history. Okay. And Quebec that in Quebec is a health care expense premium. Oh. That is their logic. And they felt that the cost was about 100 Canadian more for the unvaccinated oh, okay. than the vaccinated. Now, in Europe, it's a penalty. But mm. in Quebec, they actually put into the, the, the statement. Now, Delta, is, Delta Airlines is has a higher premium for the unvaccinated, right? All right. Yeah. They're letting them be unvaccinated. They're testing them, but mm -hmm. they have a higher insurance premium per month. They're treating them like insurance. they're treating them like smokers, like smokers, exactly. Yeah. So if you don't want to take the shot, like my wife doesn't want to take the shot, and is willing to pay uh, extra bucks per month for the health insurance, you know, there's no sense well, of making. Well, now you're going in the direction is like, why should we? You shouldn't have to pay extra because you're talking about a vaccine that's not proven to prevent something. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm using. Well, now you brought it up. Well, I, I am. Didn't. I'm using the logic. I'm using the logic of these governments and these employers. And the next thing that oh, you you're did, using logic. Excuse I me. I am. But the <laughs> next you're thing. Logic? The next I'm thing. Sorry. The next thing <laughs> was me off guard. when I came in here. <laughs> what? This, when I came in here this morning and <laughs> you were you were you were you were <laughs> ranting and raving not not on the air. You were ranting and raving off the air. What did I Rant say? And raving. 
that the Supreme Court did for us yesterday? Um, no vax mandate. He released. He released private companies. He released or, or took away from these godlike people the idea that they can. There's, there's certain things that the state's supposed to do, right? There's certain things the federal government's supposed to do. Now that I'm an elected city councilman, I know there's some stuff the city's supposed to do the state's not responsible for, stuff the state's responsible for that the feds aren't responsible for. And the idea of the laws about getting married and uh, how your schools run and everything else is supposed to be a homegrown decision. Bill, now I need to coach you on this. So when we talk about the elites up here, you're supposed to have your head just slightly down, okay, just a little bit further. You didn't have it down enough, okay? All right, can I say something? Yeah. It's your, it's your, it's your no, 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 let me it's say your program. something. Go ahead. No, let me say oh, something. My now, program is this. Yes, but okay. let me say something. Now, I, I want to be very clear, obviously, we we have no control of this and 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 i don't want to say this in a negative way um well let me just get it out what's upsetting to me now we talk about cancer research okay and we talk about cancer treatment and we have two questions pertaining to cancer every week on every this week. program yep. okay now i personally have uh, uh, an experience with this with a family member that um uh went through cancer and they were not able to take care of their children and it, it put a burden on the family because what we don't talk about in this we talk about treatments but we don't talk about we don't go out of the circle on this these questions and talk about the burden that that a family goes under sometimes we do. okay well no we do but we what do, i'm right. saying is, but not all the time. what i'm saying is so you have a child that has cancer okay um there's burdens where mom and dad may have to leave their job yep they may have to travel for treatments. It really changes their whole world. Right. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. R Ronald McDonald House. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I know where you're going. All right. Ronald McDonald House. I personally have a family member. This goes back almost 25 years ago. Went through cancer. And the family was able to stay at Ronald McDonald House while they were at Duke University with treatments. This is 25 years ago. And it was very helpful to, to the family. Very you, helpful. You should see the Ronald McDonald House across from my office. It's five stories tall. Right. And jack, absolutely. And beautiful. it has it been it beautiful. has been an absolutely amazing thing that the that the McDonald's Corporation has done. It really yeah, has. One, right. you got to highlight positives. Now in Canada, this is in Canada. It's not in the U.S. In Canada, Ronald McDonald Houses, as of from memory, January seventeenth will be not allowing if you don't have children over five five and older children and the family are not vaccinated can no longer be at the ronald mcdonald house oh okay. really yeah right? right madness right madness is that true it's you true. read the story madness. right now to me that's uh, this is a medical segment but what i'm when i sit here and i listen to this right here and i think about when I see, I'm going to look at the camera. When I read these questions and, and you're sending them in, these guys confuse the hell out of me. I just put it like this. This guy just, I mean, I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, is there a test after this? But <laughs> emotionally, I look at every single question as you ask them to these two gentlemen. I look at them from a standpoint, and I look at them and say, What's this done to the family? What's the, you know, I see what this family's going through and stuff. I, I see it from that side, you know what I mean? Not that you don't. And when I read that story about Ronald McDonald House, it was, it was just, it was, it's just one of the many things that just was so upsetting. Well, it makes you me. angry. Yeah, it was just so upsetting to me. So I didn't mean to get off on that. No, tangent. but Ronald McDonald House that we have at the Northside Cancer Center is next to CHOA, the Children's right. Hospital. Uh, it is a fabulous place. It is really fabulous, and I agree you, with you. It's, you want me to give you the. 60 I got to close this up. Well, I yeah. got them in the green 60, room, 60 and I don't second, mean to. Sixty-second uh, wrap up on COVID right now. Sixty-second wrap up. You got it. Okay. Go. COVID's moving endemic. It is a treatable disease. You need to, uh, if you have symptoms and you can get tested at symptoms, and you can get immediate testing at symptoms. Get yourself tested. If you, uh, that's if you're symptomatic. Okay, and then call your doctor, your doctor who treats, not your doctor who says, wait, your lips turn blue, your doctor who treats, okay? Those are the things. It's treatable disease, 
you need to, if you can get tested immediately and find out you have it, you need to call your doctor and get instructions, okay? Uh, just running around saying, I, I ran into somebody with COVID, I'm gonna get tested, that's nonsense, okay? We don't need to be running, we don't need to be testing normal people. There are not enough tests out there and it doesn't do anything for us, okay? So live your lives, you got symptoms, get tested, get directions. And that's exactly what, what is happening. I had a patient in the office uh, Tuesday he said, well, I, got, I had COVID last week. I said, Were you sick? He said, no. He said, my daughter had COVID. I had seen her the week before, and she came and took my wife and I to the testing to get tested. Were you the one of you sick? said, no. Said they, but they both were positive. So they went in here as COVID cases. I'm getting, I would say our office is getting 6 to 12 calls a day with positive COVID right now. Oh yes, it's it's it, it is it is running rampant. But, uh, but nobody's in the hospital from my practice. Right, it's running. Do you, do you, I didn't mean to take that time. No, up. no. Do you have something that we no, don't donate blood? That's donate it. donate blood. Donate blood. Well, I I, I want to say now, um, not that you left anything out of your sixty second COVID wrap up. I I just want to reiterate, folks. Um, you know our our seniors um, are fine China. Are fine China. And we need to we need to take care of them. We need to take care of them. And this is one, I'll just call it one more thing. Within if, if, if mom and dad and your and your physician saying, hey, if they get pneumonia this year, it, you know, it could it could be life threatening. We've we've heard that with our, our our senior parents and things like that. That's the seriousness we need to take this with our senior citizens. And I don't want to say oh, else. and the ob uh, and the obese, and, and right? The exactly, diabetic, exactly. And the chronic lung and everybody. Exactly. Yeah, okay. But five-year-old children need to be out on the playground playing with each other. I'm not going to advocate pushing each other down, but it could happen. Mm -hmm. And when you <laughs> and, and, and when yeah, you get in school, right? and when you get up and you got some dirt on your hands and you go like this, they're going to live, right? Right. Got it. Yeah, you could, could, are we going to do my special thing? Yeah, go ahead with your, whatever. Well, I don't know what your special thing is. I mean, I had a patient send me a, send me a wonderful email. It right. Was, you going to pull that up for us? Then pull it up. I mean, I don't care. Hey, which just look on your screen. I thought this was very touching. <laughs> very touching. All right. It's up there. I can't see. What I, is I, it? Let me give my chance to read it for a second. It's, uh, a, it's a hard one to understand. <laughs> All right. Let's let's move on here. All right, every, every day you got to find a smile. Been, been it's been now, right? Folks, we're going to take a break. It is time for the All Star Political Panel. I have held them. Do back. we have to worry about the FTC shutting us down? Oh, oh yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got, I got something from over here, and they're going to probably bring it over here as soon as we're is back. Is that the green room or the, that's, that's the banana section? We've got the Merv Griffin set okay. for those that understand that. Take a break. <laughs> 